Good morning. How are we? Welcome to the Blue Innovation Doc. My name is Martin Redmayne. I'm your host for most of this day, and I hope to make sure this is fun, interesting, and let's say real. No PR fluff. This is going to be an interesting conversation that I'm going to moderate with some really powerful CEOs, but also some pretty imp important ministers. This morning, I'm going to introduce an opening session now, starting off with Petros Michalides from the Brut Dusseldorf team. Petros, you come on stage first. Each of these four people will do a little introduction welcome speech, but I want to also make sure that we welcome Mona Neubauer, who is our real official opener to the whole event. So, Petros, please. Thank you, dear Martin, and uh, welcome. Minister Neubauer, thank you very much for being here today. It's a great pleasure having you here. And it's, uh, yeah, how can I say, just wow. Wow, because we started some time ago thinking about why it's not working good enough, the acceleration of sustainable innovations in our industry. And that was a discussion we have taken with Philip Easthill from the European boating industry. And this is also a discussion we have taken with Martin, who is years in the industry, and of course with some of the leaders you will see later on here. And we said we don't have enough communication between ourselves. We don't have enough talks. We don't have enough trust sometimes to talk about what is real missing. But the main point is that there is no way back. And we have to create this platform for leading the water sport industry, and not only the boating, into a sustainable future. Because this is what everybody asks about. And since Port Dusseldorf is the largest platform in the world for innovation and B2B platforms for water sports, I think it's the right place to have also the Blue Innovation Doc here. And I'm very happy that you're all with us during the opening of the Blue Innovation Doc. Thank you very much. And there will be a lot of talks. And uh, I have, of course, to say a big thank you to all those exhibitors of ours who co-financed this nice area, the B2B launch behind. And I'm really happy Philip will tell you later on uh, some details about the program. But I'm just now happy, and this is a starting point of a great platform. And thank you to Group Beneteau, to San Lorenzo, to Azimut, Bavaria, Brunswick, Demarine, Princess, Greenline, Fabiani, E-Propulsion, Torquedo, Sun Reef Yachts, and Silent Yachts. Thank you for being with us, supporting this idea, and hope to welcome more supporters in the future, because this should become big. It depends on us, and it depends on our thoughts about the future, and it will become big. And thank you for being here with our first steps. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much, Philip, for your effort, for the great program you have created. Thank you, guys, for the technical support we have here. And be our guest at the Blue Innovation Doc. Thank you. Thank you, Petrus. Thank you. Congratulations so far. Philip, EBI, the, uh, let's say the yachting lobbyist. Come and have a chat on the stage, please. Introduce yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for being here. Dear Minister Neubauer, dear Felix Leinemann, dear sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to stand here. It's been a couple of months, a couple of weeks of hard work, uh, but it's really a pleasure to now officially open the Blue Innovation Doc. Thank you, Petros. Thank you to your team for the outstanding work that you do to get this on the road. We have the pleasure of launching today what will be nine days of panel discussions, presentations and keynote speakers, really a lot of valuable, interesting content. We will have over 110 speakers, from across the world of business and politics. I calculated how much this is in minutes. This is 1,425 minutes of content for you to enjoy the coming nine days. That is pretty much one full day of content. So you have a lot of work ahead the next uh, week to look at all of this. We have all of the crucial topics on the agenda. We have 
propulsion, fuels, financing, investment, materials, marina infrastructure, and much more. All of the big topics that come for our industry are on the table here. By the way, this will also be live streamed, so if unfortunately you cannot be here for nine days, you can also watch it from the comfort of your home. I'm especially proud that we are reaching beyond our industry bubble. We will hear from other sectors and understand where we can work together and cooperate. We all need to make that all important push towards sustainability, so we need to make it together. We are also creating the space for dialogue between our industry and consumers, between our industry and NGOs, and yes, we will even have critical voices here on the stage because we need to take this into account. We need to hear what is important for our industry to work towards a sustainable future. We are also honored to have the European Commission and many representatives of the European institutions here, and they're coming in full force the coming days. We will see a lot of really exciting innovation that can help our sector move towards the green transition in the coming days. There will be some big announcements. Uh, tomorrow we are launching a study done by ourselves, EBI, EBI on sustainable propulsion, as seen by the industry and as seen by the consumer. Uh, this week we will also launch the EU roadmap for end of life of boats so that we can really truly tackle the issue of the circular economy in our industry and solve this issue by the end of this decade. Supporting the industry is what our aim is as EBI, as European boat industry. It is essential now. The last years have seen some enormous upheaval for our industry and indeed society at large. PwC does an annual CEO survey ahead of the World Economic Forum in Davos. It showed that 40% of global CEOs think their organization is no longer economically viable in 10 years' time if they continue doing as they are now. One of the main reasons for this is certainly the climate crisis. So for our industry, we hope to bring a bit of certainty and to help them make this all-important push towards sustainability and maybe even create a mini Davos here at the Blue Innovation Dock. This is more than just nine days of discussions. It kicks off several smaller Blue Innovation Dock sessions throughout the year. And our job as EBI is to take on this challenge and make sure that everything that is discussed here is also brought to the industry, implemented, and also brought to policymakers. So we encourage all of you to work with us as EBI to make this happen together. Our industry is a jewel of a maritime world. We represent a European success story in recreation, tourism, and manufacturing. Our boat builders and suppliers are champions of manufacturing and export in Europe. We have more potential to grow and lead the green transition. With everything that we will hear in the coming nine days, my outlook for the industry is positive. Let me remind you of our mission statement as EBI. Advancing and representing a sustainable boating and nautical tourism industry made in Europe. I'm convinced that we can achieve this. So our call, my call to all of you, let's make sustainable boating made and practiced in Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felix. Philip, my mistake. Felix, please join me on the stage. From the European Commission, welcome to you. Far too early for me to make that mistake, sorry. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Minister, uh, Philip, and uh, Petros. Thank you for the, inviting me here. I'm very pleased uh, and, uh, to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of the European Commission, on behalf of our Commissioner, uh, the Commissioner for Environment and Oceans and Fisheries. And um, why I am very pleased, because what you are doing here resonates very much um, with the European Commission's new approach for a sustainable blue economy. You could call it the blue part of the European Green Deal, because as our commissioner uses to say, there is no green without blue. So this new approach, adopted now almost two years ago, um, signals a progressive shift from a concept that we used to call blue growth to um, a sustainable blue economy, where the sustainable use of marine resources is a core concept and the basis for the economy. It embeds the blue economy in the objectives of the Green Deal, carbon neutrality, zero pollution, circular economy, restoring our biodiversity and ecosystems. And every sector will need to contribute um, by reducing its own impact while unlocking new business opportunities. Transformations will be needed across all maritime sectors um, and all maritime value chains. That means new technologies, innovation, and digitalization will boost this process, and including in those sectors that are considered more established. And I'm not saying that boating is a more established sector, but let's look at shipping, for example, or the fishing sector as well. 
And what we are seeing is actually how innovation in one of these sectors um, fertilizes or is transferred to other sectors. Last week, we had two pieces of news which were quite important. A uh, French company, Neoline, or Neoline uh, is building a ship or has started the, the, to build a ship that will transport uh, goods across the Atlantic only powered by, or mainly powered by sailing vessels, aiming to power itself by 80 to 90 percent. Uh, it's a relatively small boat which can carry 320 cars. But the same week we had news that a re European research project was launched to support a Swedish company to build a ship that would, or to prove that they could power a ship with 7,000 cars uh, a car carrier with 80 to 90 percent reduction of CO2 emissions. So this is something that is coming, and it's something that came from professional sailing, from competitive sailing. So there's cross fertilization here that is uh, very good, and you will hear from Boris Herrmann and, and the team Malizia later today. So there we already have a cross fertilization that we would like to see also in other sectors. So I would invite the boating industry to be similarly open to such innovation, looking at other sectors. Um, no need to be limited to marine. can be aeronautical, the, the automobile industry, what have you. So during the Blue Innovation Dock, during the next uh, nine days, you will hear a lot of examples how the European Commission is supporting this transition. Um, a lot of my colleagues will come here from very different departments of the Commission because this touches every department, it goes across everything. And the strong presence from the Commission also shows how we value these discussions here. For example, we are preparing a potential revision of the Recreational Craft Directive that will support the um, digital transition and the green innovation in the sector. Together with the industry, Philip already mentioned it, we have developed a roadmap for the recycling of end-of-life boats. And at the first session this afternoon, I will be able to talk about the transition pathway for tourism, for more resilience and sustainability. We are working towards cleaner and smarter marinas. And in May this year, we will launch what we call a blue forum of sea users to see how the different sectors can work together, also in, in the way that we use the space at sea thinking about maritime spatial planning, um, the massive expansion of offshore renewable energy that we will see in the coming years and how that will interact with other sea users and with the restoration of the marine environment. Before I conclude, I would like to um, give you a quote, thinking about innovation that is already there, technological, social or behavioral. I'm reminded of Bertrand Picard, a, a pioneer you may have heard about him. He did the first ever solar flight uh, around the world <coughs> in 2016 in his airplane Solar Impulse. And talking about Solar Impulse, he was saying that when I was flying over the Pacific and the Atlantic, I thought I was in the future. I was looking at the sun that was running my four electric motors with huge propellers. There was no sound, no noise, no pollution, no fuel, and I could fly forever. But then he explained that even though the experience seemed futuristic, he realized that this is not the future. On the contrary, it is the pure present, because this is exactly the kind of opportunities that we need to seize. He was living in the present, he was doing it with existing technology. And this is what that Bertrand Picard said, when I understood that the rest of the world is in the past, in old, polluting and inefficient systems. So, making the future the present, that's the spirit that I wish to the Blue Innovation Dog. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. Am I on? Yes, I am. Thank you. Felix, thank you. Okay, and to, to end the opening session, please may I welcome Minister Neubauer to the stage. And you are the official welcome, if you like. You're the most powerful person here in the room. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to welcome you at the Messe Düsseldorf, at the Messe Board, at the Blue Innovation Dock, and I'm really inspired about the words you um, talk to us, because there is the European boating industry, but the ideas you bring to words is, let's make it a sustainable European boat industry. So, dear Mr. Leinemann, dear Mr. Easthill, Mr. Michelidakis, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to speak to you here in North Rhine-Westphalia. As you all know, 
Düsseldorf International Boat Show Boot is one of the world's premier boat shows and we are, uh, we are all delighted to welcome you back on our state's capital after two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. You all know very well, one fifth of all tourists have an interest in water and water sports tourism. For an eighth, which I'm sure includes you, water sports is decisive for the choice, their holiday destination. Our state has a lot to offer in this regard. Maybe you do not know yet, but you will find it out. Especially the Rhine, the West German Canal Network, the lakes along the Ruhr are beautiful places for rowing, canoeing, stand-up paddling or sailing. Our state and Germany in general are, however, not only keen on water sports and boating. Germany, as well, is one of the most important countries in Europe for water sports, shipping and the production of boats and the corresponding supply chain. The industry is around 2.4 billion euros and it provides employment for 20,000 people. Much like North Rhine-Westphalia, the boating industry tackles the challenges and opportunities of the transformation towards a climate-neutral future. The boat addresses this with the blue innovation dog where we are right now. For the whole duration of this year's trade fair, this platform will focus on topics with a high relevance for the future of your industry, such as sustainability or alternative power units. In order to contribute the fight against climate change, we have the ambitious goal of making North Rhine-Westphalia Europe's first, first climate-neutral economic region and advance the circular economy. You also spoke about this challenge. As one of the countries in Europe that has the biggest inland waterway traffic, we are primary concerned with the largest emitters. With regards to shipping, this is commercial inland navigation, hence we are determined to contribute the transformation on this sector. Then, 10 days ago, I visited the Lux shipyard in Niederkassel, a small village nearby Bonn, Bundesstadt, and hand over a subsidy note. There we are funding foreshore power systems with 700,000 euros. We also focus on new propulsion technologies technologies, for example, the Rhine project that develops fuel cell ship propulsion systems that use hydrogen as fuel. So after my speech here, I have to go to Bochum to get there a keynote to hydrogen and shipping. So this is what focuses my work every day, the future, the sustainable future. Furthermore, we are promoting the development of innovative and sustainable materials with the support of the European Union. The results of these projects will surely be applied in boat building as well. I see my invitation to speak to you here today as a strong sign that you, like us, would like to make water sports more sustainable. Therefore. I would like to invite you to let me know how we as a state government may support you in your venture to make water sports greener, whether in production or in practice, and then we will see how we can support you. I wish you an insightful discussion and a stimulating visit to the fair. Enjoy Düsseldorf, enjoy Messe Düsseldorf, enjoy this really beautiful region, North Rhine-Westphalia. Thank you very much.